Okay, so I go that. Uh, yes. See how can I share it? <laughs> okay, okay. So, doctor, go down. You can see uh, share screen, which is a green with an arrow. Okay. Yeah. Yes, doctor. Uh, okay, kindly, kindly doctor press on it. To bring the, the Zoom meeting. So by the time um, after yeah. Hala is Professor Hala is uh, sharing her screen, I would welcome everybody back. And our next session is on serum levels of FAG and some of its effectors in adult AML correlation with prognostic factors and survival by Professor Halal Mesellami from Ain Shams University in Egypt. Professor Halal Mesellami works as the head of biochemistry department since 2001 and professor of biochemistry since 2006. Professor Hella has served in many capacities, Vice Dean for Postgraduate Affairs and Scientific Research, Dean for Community and Environmental Affairs, Member in the Permanent Committee, Faculty of Pharmacy and Shams University, Member in Council Patent of Academy of Scientific Research and Technology in the Ministry of Scientific Research, and lecturer and consultant in UNESCO since 2008. Professor Hala is a reviewer in some international journals and is a member in the Counseling Committee for Special Prices since 2012. Welcome Professor Hala and we are eager to um, listen to you. Hello, Dr. Hala, can you hear us? I can put her to the meeting for my uh, second email because uh, you hear me, but I can open it and share my. Uh... I can share it for you, doctor. Would you like? My screen. Okay, uh, doctor, let me share it with you. Okay, can you help uh, me? Yes, sure. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Does the presentation show to you? Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, Dr. Hala will proceed from here. So whenever you want me to move to the next slide, just tell me next. Can we start? Okay, hey, no, but it's a difficult for me to repeat this. Okay, I, I will start to... No, I need to say, to manage myself. Sorry for late. Let me to. Okay, then I'll stop sharing. Try and, again. Okay, dear. I'll stop How sharing and I, you can try. Make a share for. Uh, oh. Yes, it's okay. Okay, sorry. Share. It's okay. That's uh, I got it. <laughs> okay. You 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 see it? Yeah, now. Not it. Yeah, perfect. We can see it now, doctor. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your patience until I arrange my, my presentation. Uh, you are, uh, hello everybody. Uh, this uh, uh, presentation for today, is, I will talk about uh, another disease or another type of cancer uh, like uh, acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, our title is the serum levels of fact uh, and some of its effectors in adult acute myeloid leukemia. Correlation with prognostic factors and survival. Presented by uh, Professor Dr. Helen Salami, uh, Professor of Biochemistry in Shams University and uh, Dean Faculty of Pharmacy Sinai University, Egypt. Uh, 
first I will talk about uh, uh, our aim and the introduction about of, uh, my uh, work. This is the work is uh, for, uh, thesis for master student uh, in an ancient university. Uh, first, uh, cancer is the second leading cause of deaths globally and it's responsible for an estimated 99 uh, million deaths in uh, 2020. Globally, about one in six deaths is due to cancer. More than uh, 60,000 people are diagnosed with leukemia. Egypt lie in the 21 rank among, among world countries in leukemia. Mortality rates for this is bad. Uh, our aim uh, to study the new markers or uh, as early uh, diagnostic marker or markers that lead to us to the case is prognostic or not. So what is leukemia? According to National Cancer Institute Dictionary of Cancer Terms, leukemia is defined as cancer that starting in blood forming tissue, such as bone marrow, which lead to large number of abnormal blood cells to be produced and enter the bloodstream normal blood, but it's in leukemia, there is large number of different cells like tissue. So it leads to uh, changes in uh, body uh, and blood. Now, what is the type of uh, leukemia? Uh, types of leukemia is, uh, depend on time-based classification or cell type-based classification. Time-based classification, so we, we uh, give it acute leukemia and chronic leukemia. Acute leukemia move rapidly and needs aggressive treatment in all. We are alone. Sorry. Je viens directement à la piscine là. Parce que je ne suis plus en haut. Je suis à, je suis à la piscine. C'est le 265. Some person uh, open uh, his mic. I can connect. Yeah, this is an Esther. This is an Esther. If Did you hear me now? Because you meet all uh, I'm you. Okay, thank you. Uh, acute leukemia is uh, a more uh, rapidly and need aggressiveness or aggressive uh, treatment involve immature blood cell and that may never uh, mature to work as they are designed. But chronic is chronic is took a lot of time uh, until uh, slowly then acute leukemia. Another type, a lower cell type is a classification. It is lymphocytic and uh, me, uh, me, uh, myelogenous leukemia. Uh, we are focused uh, uh, about acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, it's occurring okay in both the children and adults. Chronic uh, myelogenous leukemia mainly affects adult. Acute lymphatic, lymphocytic leukemia is most common type of leukemia in children, also affect adults. Uh, chronic lymphotic, lymphocytic leukemia, most often in people more than or over than 55 years old. So, is the most common. So the most common hematologic malignancy in adults and often associated with many sub, uh, subsequently tyrosine kinases signaling. This is our aim in this study. We focus on tyrosine kinases. kinases. Which one uh, uh, markers? Uh, we study uh, four uh, uh, tyrosine kinases. The first one is called FAC or Focal adhesion kinase. It's involved in many processes such, such as promoting cancer growth, cancer proliferation, and metastasis. Look to fact, there's a lot of mechanism. It's acting by kinase dependent or, or in, uh, in kin uh, independent kinases. Fact, when it activated through 
dependent or independent kinase is leads to growth, survivor sign uh, signaling, invasion, migration, and vascular genesis, which leads to tumor and genesis, and finally to lead to cancer or aggressiveness of can cancer. First, we study the FAC. If FAC increased, it's poor prognosis for patients that suffer from acute myeloid leukemia. Second kinase is SARC. What is the, is the SARC? SARC is proto-oncogene tyrosine protein kinase, also known as pro-oncogene C SARC. It is similar to virus SARC gene, Ross sarcoma virus, which became known as the first oncogenic retrovirus that could be used to stay, study the development of cancer. So the two kinases, FAC and SARC, there is a lot of correlation between both of kinases. This make all signaling like this and increase transcription, which finally leads to survivor, professional angiogenesis, migration, invasion, metastasis, and this all conditions, this leads to a aggressiveness of a cancer or leukemia. We cross talk between both is there is correlation between posts? Yes, in this study, we approve that there is correlation between FAC and SAC. Like, like there is a lot of pathways, but uh, we will not study all of this, but by uh, literature, we found that there is many, many, many interesting pathways depend on FAC and SARC uh, in leukemia or cancer disease, disease on formation disease like, like that. So the third one or a third kinase is Efren. Efren, when increase, it in, uh, leads to an in, invasiveness, vascularization, metastatic potential. There is two types of, uh, of Efren, Efren A and Efren B. We focus in this study on Efren A4. There is a lot of types I mean, of uh, Efren A. We focus on Efren and we study to, is there is correlation between Efren and FAC and SARC? Yes, there is a correlation, but it is highly significant negative correlation or a positive correlation. We will, uh, uh, I will say at the end of this presentation. However, the serum level of soluble efferin isoform was not investigated till now in acute myeloid leukemia. This is our aim to search about new um, marker for early, early diagnosis or prognosis, as I said before. One of the interesting signaling pathway of FAC or follicle adhesion kinase is being downstream effector of myofibrogenesis regulator one, and we abbreviated by MR1. There is correlation between FAC, which uh, converts to FAC kinase or uh, activated FAC kinases. So FAC phosphorylated form act, uh, make uh, activation to act, and ACT is become active by phosphorylated form of ACT and ACT lead to MLC2 activated. And here we found MRI1 is a cofactor also, and this lead with uh, help with FAC to lead to stress fiber and cell migration and finally metastasis in cancer. So this is another mechanism we study our focus on this study to study the correlation between FAC and MR, uh, M1. So, however, the significance of MR1 in human acute myeloid leukemia has not yet been explored clearly until now. Uh, one of the most, uh, or last example of this kinase, the fourth one is kinase, a protein kinase C, which is, has a role in propulsion, survival, growth, apoptosis, and inhibition. Protein kinase make like, like this protein kinase. It's also play a role in profilation and differentiation. So 
Our aim of this study to measure the serum level of FAC MR1, uh, uh, FRIN4, a SARC and protein kinase in acute myeloid leukemia patient. This study also, the, our aim to study the correlation between the level of each pair of this biomarker altogether. And also, we study the investigate the association between each of them, this biomarker with patient diagnosis and prognosis. Finally, study the association between this biomarker and overall survivor, because you know, uh, you, you know more than, than me that the patient of acute myeloid leukemia is not survivor for a long time. You lost a lot of uh, patients in this study. Subject and method. This study, uh, uh, we, uh, the subject about uh, we we make uh, sorry uh, subject with blood sample and method. This is study population uh, about in 90 person 90 patient group one and we divided the to group one as control subject and group two uh, acute myeloid leukemia uh, subject. Control group must be held apparently healthy, uh, not suffer from any health problem, not take any medication or dietary supplementation. A group two that suffer from uh, acute myeloid leukemia, it is range between 18 and 60, not less than, uh, than 18 and not more than 60 years. Any cancer other than acute myeloid leukemia, it's uh, uh, out of our study. Any blood disorder, any liver cirrhosis diseases, we make like, uh, this is not in, in our study. Blood sample, we took sample uh, of sodium editing, our uh, plain vacuum cleaner. Uh, so we make CBC analysis, immunophenotyping, uh, cytogenic study, and also make by ELISA serum pack, MR1, uh, Efren, A4, SARC, and protein kinase 3. So the methodology like CBC, uh, uh, culture counter, uh, immunophenotyping by uh, uh, photocytometry, cytogenic study by uh, cytofresh, and ELISA, uh, we measure PAC by ELISA and make a statistical analysis. Uh, this study we make, uh, sorry, we make uh, but not non-parametric study uh, because it is a clinical study. We cannot, uh, the range of uh, uh, reading is very different uh, or very extreme, uh, low and high. So it made by non-parametric study. A uh, main weight need to comparison between independent group, a uh, Kaplan mirror to survivor curve and rock curve for diagnosis our specificity and sensitivity of this marker. Our results, uh, we talk about our, the, our results. Uh, first, anthropometric uh, and immunophenotyping results. Uh, uh, like uh, we found that uh, first, Hemoglobin in, in leukemia, in acute myeloid leukemia, is uh, significantly decreased about control group, white blood cells significantly increased, platelet count uh, is significantly decreased, uh, uh, and uh, cluster of differentiation, uh, there is a lot of the cluster of differentiation, uh, 13 positive and negative, uh, 60, 60 patient, 66 patient was positive and four was negative, a cluster of the differentiation 33, there is 62 plus and eight uh, negative and so on. Uh, but we found that gender and age did not show significant difference with regard to serum level of each marker. Serum level of each marker Uh, there is uh, the main uh, kinases that we measure it, and we are focused about this uh, kinases to uh, to take it if, uh, early diagnosis or prognosis for uh, the patient. Uh, uh, 
first, we found that fat follicle addition kinase uh, is like significant increase in acute myeloid leukemia group. This is maybe because some uh, previous study, they found that fat induces the survival of leukemia cells and also has a potential role in the activation of vascular endothelial growth factor two expression. Regarding MR1, we found that MR1 is significantly increased in acute myeloid leukemia. This is also because MR1 it's another, it has a mechanism that it accelerates cancer growth through phosphorylation of the ME mitogenic adenosine uh, uh, phosphokinase ERK pathway and facilitating metastasis by activation the fact act pathway. Also, we found that efferent uh, vice versa of all is significantly decreased in this uh, study or in acute uh, myeloid leukemia patients. A previous study suggests that Decreased effluent expression is caused by hypermethylation and mutation of receptors of efferent gene. So it decreases in acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, SARC is highly significant increase. Sorry. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I forget to uh, turn off my phone. Uh, SARP, uh, it is high significant increase in this study. SARC has role in metastasis for regulation of matrix metalloproteinases line. It also interacts with beta catenin and causes its nuclear translocation. And finally, a protein kinase, a total protein kinase, is a highly, highly increased, significant part, highly increased, and we know that protein kinase mediate cancer cell proliferation and inhibit apoptosis via phosphorylation of MAC. So we found that from this study or this result that all markers increased except efferin A4, it's all significantly decreased. We made a, look, a lot of a correlation between uh, all this uh, studied uh, parameters, and we found that fat uh, is, uh, correlated with MR1, uh, positive correlated fat is uh, uh, induced, uh, sorry, um, induced uh, efferin A activation, indicate inactivation of downstream of fat signaling pathway. Number two, MR1, it's accelerate cancer growth by activating a uh, PAC act pathway because we found that MR1 is highly significant with PAC and negative, negatively significant with uh, efferin E and positive significant with uh, SARC and highly positive significant with uh, protein kinase. Also, we found that efferin is highly uh, sig um, is negatively sig uh, significant with fat and negative sig significant with MR and negative significant with SART and highly sig negative significant with BKA. I told that uh, efferin is the only one that it is and all are increased. We focus on the diagnostic by, by, by markers for acute myeloid leukemia uh, to show uh, diagnostic value, so, uh, uh, RO curve, our uh, rock curve, because uh, we, when we study uh, a new marker, we, we must know which one is highly sensitive and highly specific. So fat, we found that fat is highly sens sensitivity is 75% and 85% uh, specificity in leukemia. So it's maybe used in diagnosis of mini cancer such as ovarian cancer. So we can use it, but it's not highly significant and not highly specific a, a tumor marker in leukemia. MR1 is, is 96, but specificity is
uh, we found the inference its sensitivity is percent and the specificity 92 per, uh, 95 percent is highly significant like it's we can use it as this uh, tumor marker in our marker in diagnosis our prognosis of acute myeloid leukemia is used but it's used in lymphoma so we can uh, which one is lymphoma or leukemia and also in prostate cancer Professor Hello, we have five minutes, please. Uh, okay, five minutes. Oh, sorry. SARC is uh, increased, it's highly significant and highly uh, specific. So uh, I will have, uh, we make a survivor, uh, we make a survivor uh, link in uh, survive. We found that uh, a lot of there are, uh, this is markers. Uh, inter uh, correlated with uh, markers with survivor because a lot of uh, patients passed. So finally, I will pass uh, correlation because I said the correlation because I have no time because I took the time first uh, in the five minutes to start. Conclusion, we conclude from this is a significantly high serum pack, MR1, SARC, and protein kinase, while significantly lower if a four level are found in acute myeloid leukemia. This study confirms that all of this in acute myeloid leukemia. Rock curve for serum level of, of each biomarker showed a significantly high area under the curve, sensitivity and specificity for or, or early diagnostic value of each biomarker. Number three, a significant negative correlation between FAC and soluble efferin A4 concentration. Moreover, a strong positive correlation was found regarding the serum a level of the other. Number four, a serum FAC MR1 efferin A4 SARC and total protein kinase level did not show any significant difference at top of page point, at least on point oh five among the different FAB. French, uh, French American two uh, subtypes of acute myeloid leukemia is, uh, and finally a significant correlation was found between each biomarkers and some different individual prognostic marker uh, for acute uh, myeloid leukemia. So we can take all uh, this uh, serum pack, MR, SARC and total PCK level were found to be highly significant negative correlated with uh, uh, overall survival. On the other hand, Efren E4 serum level was significantly positively correlated with overall survival. Thank you. Uh, I will recommendation to make another study and uh, we study another marker uh, in this uh, next uh, study. And uh, I will uh, say thanks for teamwork for this uh, thesis uh, study, Dr. Mona, Dr. Sara, Dr. Alia, that uh, helped us to give us a sample. And thank you for your patience to hear this because I feel that my my talk is out of your field or far from your field, but it's, it's make a collaboration between a pharmacy and uh, your uh, conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Hada, for sharing this very interesting study, sharing the details. It's always good to um, have this information and benefit from the knowledge. So thank you very much. It looks like you've put a lot of work yeah. into the study itself and into the presentation. So thank you for that. Thank uh, you. Any questions from the audience? Uh, Yes, uh, hi, Dr. Hala, and thank you again. It's really wonderful because uh, now the smart uh, treatment of cancer is really important using biomarkers. But of course, we stand off a point how much accessibility is the testing and how much are these biomarkers can be determined in the sector of population. Well, my question to you is, uh, can the fact be used for the selection of the treatment and not only for assessment of prognosis? Because in one of your slides, you had a correlation between FAC and uh, the VEGF, the vascular endothelial growth factor. So are there potential uh, findings for this? 
uh, research about the vascular and cerebral growth factor? No, not in this study. Not in this study. Okay. So, so tell, so tell me. I'm sorry, me. because there is a lot of kinases and it's highly costed to, to make this, um, to buy these uh, markers because uh, we work yes. from on our money, not from uh, grant like other countries. Here in Egypt, it's from your, my own money. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hannah. <laughs> it's really interesting. And thank you, Dr. Aline. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I will just say goodbye now. I enjoyed uh, my stay with thank you. you. And thank you uh, both presenters for the beautiful presentations. And I hope we uh, see each other soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye you, bye. Dr. Thank you. I'm really lovely. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Very kind of you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Lin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.